I was trying to outrun all of that weather. I got caught in the snow three times. I don't have four wheel drive and uh, I don't have chains. After having such an incredible time in Bryce Canyon, I made a quick trip to the Salt Lake City area to see my good friend Chris, who I had met at the RTR last year. Unfortunately, I made a very silly mistake and I had a package shipped to the Bryce Canyon area, so I had to backtrack to Bryce Canyon before making my way to Salida, Colorado, and again, meeting up with some escaper friends. While I was driving from Salt Lake City down to Bryce Canyon, I got news that a sudden winter storm was coming through, so the entire area I was driving through was going to have freezing weather. My goal, race to Grand Junction, Colorado, the first day and beat the winter storm. Bryce Canyon was supposed to get snow and be down to 21 degrees, and my van isn't a four season RV, and my pipes would freeze in those temperatures. The rocky red canyons off of I-70 were just incredibly stunning. This week was the first time I had been through this area on the way to Bryce Canyon and then back to Colorado. To be able to see these red rock canyons from both angles is breathtaking. I'm always filled with so much gratitude for this earth and its splendor and how it chooses to present its glorious colors each season. It's one of the reasons I see myself traveling for years to come. I always get this question about when am I going to stop traveling and settle down? In my mind's eye, I'm settling down right now with traveling. I love what I do. This is one of the reasons I see myself traveling for years to come because of all of the beauty in this world. There's still so much to do and see just here in North America. I'd still love to see parts of Europe and a good friend recently told me about this incredible place called the North Coast 500 in Scotland. It is definitely calling my name. It's 516 miles of coastal scenic road with castles, distilleries, some island hopping, hiking tours, and some beautiful historical sites. I cannot wait to get there. Rarely do I try to outrace the weather these days. Sometimes it works, but oftentimes it doesn't. I was pretty fortunate on this drive. I only ran into some mild winter weather climbing an elevation where the temperature dropped to 36 degrees with a light dusting of snow on the trees and the highway. However, I still had to cross Monarch Pass to get to Salida. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> I made it to uh, Grand Junction, Colorado. I was trying to outrun all of that weather. I got caught in the snow three times, as you saw. There was a dusting, and it was like more like a snow rain mixture. Then I was supposed to head out early today to meet up with Sasha and Scott, who I had met in the National Park down in Bryce Canyon. I talked them into going to Salida with me for a little bit before they head back to the East Coast. If you don't know who Scott and Sasha are, I do have a video coming out about their rig. I might have already posted it. If I did, I'm going to link it right here. It's a rig tour of their New Camp Cirrus, a truck camper. Guess what, I woke up this morning, my friends in Salida said there was snow there, so I checked the pass as I have to go through Monarch Pass to get over to Salida. It got dumped with snow last night, so it doesn't look like it's gonna heat up to about 48 today is the max, and it's not until around noon, and it's super cloudy all day. I don't think I'm gonna be able to make it today. I don't have four wheel drive, and uh, I don't have chains. I just don't wanna chance it, so I'm gonna probably stay over here in Grand Junction for another day. Tomorrow's supposed to be nice and sunny, so it should all be melted by then. So no hurry, I've got work to do. I have a uh, class with my students today at four, so we'll just take care of business. There's lots of stuff to do here in Grand Junction. I still need to get groceries, so we'll just hang out here. Such is life traveling on the road. You have to really run with the weather sometimes, literally. The Monarch Pass that I have to go over to head to Salida is open. So as you can see from yesterday, it had a lot of snow and today it does not. So I'm gonna head over to Salida today. It is Wednesday. I've barely started my video that's supposed to come out tomorrow on Thursday. So I just got all the video put into the editor. I was gonna wait to leave around noon today to head to Salida so I can get some work done, but 
I'm just feeling antsy to kind of get going and get over there and then I can just get settled and finish up the video by tomorrow at three o'clock. That said, I am leaving. It is 9.30 in the morning and I actually met another subscriber over here. Oh my gosh, it's two in like a week. Jean, I'm posting her picture right here for you. She was actually over here in the Walmart parking lot in Grand Junction and she saw me yesterday and she decided uh, to not actually say hi to me because she said she wanted to respect my privacy, which I really appreciate. But if you guys are ever out there and you see me out here on the road, I love meeting everyone. So go ahead and uh, come up to me. Unless, of course, like it's at night and I really don't like people <laughs> knocking on my door all the time. But you know what I mean? If you see me out and about, go ahead and come over. I'd love to meet you. Everybody's walking toward the dead road On a place in a foreign world that away isn't broken like a starlet I am drunk but I made for her I was made to fall in love with you I was made to fall So there's the van. I like my southern accent that's coming out. <laughs> Well, there's definitely a storm brewing out here. Uh, we had some thunder and lightning earlier, but hopefully it doesn't get too bad. So I'm in Colorado and one of the things that happens here is uh, hail. Found out last year that Colorado gets a ton of hail. So hopefully we don't get that. Time to get back to work. I'm just working on videos and my course. So it's gonna be one of those days where I stay in a lot because of the weather and it's a little chilly too. All right, see you guys soon. Cloudy it is. Ooh, we're gonna get some rain. This is probably not the best day to be doing this. But mm, we'll be out till all about about four or five hours, so waiting for mail and stuff. So hopefully by the time I am done, it'll clear up. I just always am thinking of like mud and stuff like that. Have to stop and see if my jerry can is still over here. I hope it is. Oh, I don't think anybody's there. I'm gonna pull in and hopefully my jerry can is still there. Uh oh, I don't think it is. Oh yeah, there it is right there. Yay, I'm so glad. I was hoping nobody would take it, but who would want sewage? <laughs> There's a part of the road out here that looks like it might get washed out a little bit from rain off, rain drain off, because um, it's all downhill. So see, I don't know, can you see how rocky that is? Yeah, I think it's coming through actually. 
So I just have to kind of maneuver around some areas. So this is the part that gets really super rutted out. And I have to put one wheel up on the side and one wheel up on the left so I don't smack down hard when I come down. So here's the part that gets washed out a little bit, like this ravine. You can kind of see it right here. So I think it'll be okay. So sometimes this is how the roads are. Sometimes over here, you have to go through kind of bad sections of the road to get to BLM. I mean, it's public land, and so they just don't, you know, maintain them like they would, like regular, uh, regular roads. bakery right there that I'm going to go to. Do you see the lightning? Oh my god, I cannot believe how the weather changed. This jacket does not make me look good. <laughs> oh my god. But it's pouring down rain. drenched guys my coat is just completely wet everything's wet <laughs> and um, I, uh, I can't believe how it just came on all of a sudden I knew we were supposed to have a storm but not the hail and now I'm concerned about getting back up onto uh, the BLM land just because um, it can get muddy and hopefully it just hasn't rained too much there it does have a lot of rock inside of the uh, the ground the road there so hopefully it'll be fine um, but we'll see. All right, here's the road. Uh, oh yeah, it looks okay. Might be interesting getting up, we'll see. This is where it gets a little, oh. oh, that does not get back there. This is where it gets a little redded out. This isn't too bad right here. Hopefully I don't have mud all in the back of my bike. Yeah, this is kind of the gnarly part right here. It's a little rocky. I'm gonna go up this side over here because it's a little bit better and not so rutted out. It's kind of hard to tell on the camera, but maybe you can see me wobbling around. <laughs> That was the part I was actually worried about, but yeah, I think we're good. This is super rocky right here, which actually like, it's kind of a pain in the butt to go over it with the van, just cause everything, like you might hear it in the back, like all kind of moving around and everything and squeaking, but um, it actually helps to give you a little traction too when you're going up the hill. So keep going. 
little right here because it's a dip. Oop, I felt my tire spin on that one. Uh, not bad though. Like I said, these rocks kind of help give you traction too. And I've got it in tow haul mode. 